election season hit pause over July, and let me tell you, it was needed. But as you can see, Trigvi Olson, Senior LP Advisor, and I, Maya May, are back with the game we're in. And I hope you're rested, because from this very second until Tuesday, November 8th, we will be in a dead sprint to save our democracy. And it is impossible to overstate the importance of our focus tonight, the primaries in Michigan and Arizona, but we're also talking Missouri, Washington, and Kansas. So buckle up, Dorothy, or democracy is going bye-bye because the January 6th hearings effect is on, fundraising for Republicans is down, and more people believe Trump should be held accountable. But Trigvi, one word that describes this week's primaries. Uh, crazy? Crazy. That's what we were talking <laughs> like the, the theme song. Important? I don't know. I, I, you know what? I kind of feel like we're, we're like an Ace Fraley song, except rather than being in the New York groove, we're in the election group. We're back. I love we it. are back. And we were, there's good news though, right? That's the thing. We're, we're back. It's not all bad. No, I mean, you know, honestly, this week, next week, and the following week, August is, August is a huge deal this cycle in terms of primaries that are coming up. Um, it just, you have, you have so many of the states that are, and so many of the elections that are critical to democracy where the primaries are occurring. And what people have to understand is who wins these primaries ultimately dictates the choice that voters have on November 8th. So, you know, who gets through the primaries is a big deal. Um, we've had a little bit of a taste of it as, as we've had the early primaries, places like Pennsylvania, where you've had people like Doug Mastriano, um, who's crazy. Uh, you know, a white Christian nationalist who's hiring uh, anti-Semitic firms, uh, whose guys are making anti-Semitic comments. Yeah, unapologetically. Um, he's running against a Jewish person in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Um, welcome to the world we're living in. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and, you know, he had Cox in Maryland, which was during our little hiatus when we got a little break, because obviously... It's not going to slow down between here and there, Maya. We're going to be we're going to be busy, I think, uh, going forward. Right, um, and I hope and, that and this is where it kicks off. Busy too. We're going to be paying attention. Um, so let's yeah. get started. Um, uh, go ahead. No, you, uh, you cut I'm the so intro. I'm excited to get started because we've got crazy stuff going on in Michigan. You know how I feel about Michigan, the Michigan races. Um, so I want to start with there. It's one of the most watched races in the nation, the Michigan gubernatorial race. Uh, we have Democrat incumbent Gretchen Make It Rain Auto Jobs, uh, Whitmer. She's got endorsements from the United Auto Workers Union, uh, but not from the militia that tried to kidnap her, uh, which is wild. Like this is when we say crazy, we mean crazy people. Um, she's actually pulling really well against her potential Republican opponents who are, well, let's Let's look at this Ryan Kelly ad. My name is Ryan Kelly, candidate to be Michigan's next governor. Recently, I was invited to the Mackinac Policy Conference. The Detroit Chamber is requiring vaccine passports or negative COVID tests for all attendees, except for the governor's debate. That's why I'm boycotting the Mackinac Policy Conference, because we need to stand strong against these vaccine requirements and say no means no. On August 2nd, vote for a fighter as Michigan's next governor. Vote Ryan Kelly. This is Ryan Kelly, and I approve this message. Dimples be damned. This Ryan yeah. Kelly guy is dangerous. You like um, the with the dimples. We've it's been the dimples. This. He, he looks so nice, but then he's doing those Trump hand movements. Um, yeah. I feel like this race should be a no-brainer for the people of Michigan, but why is it so important to the nation? Well, I mean, obviously, the, the you know, one of the things that we have really targeted at the Lincoln Project is what we call the existential threats to democracy. And there's three races that really hit that right now and, and will through the election. It's governor's race in Pennsylvania, um, because it's real hard to have a presidential election if you don't have real elections in any state. So you got governor's race in Pennsylvania, um, governor appoints secretary of state. You got the governor's race in Michigan, which is going to drive turnout down ballot. And obviously, Michigan is a place where there's been a robust effort to overturn the last election and all of the candidates, including Ryan Kelly, who incidentally is indicted for his role in 1-6. Um, the good news is Maya, Ryan Kelly's kind of fading. Bad news, uh, they're all Ryan Kelly's on some level. Um, yeah. And then Wisconsin. So right now, you know, it's pretty fascinating because you got Tudor Dixon, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you have Ryan Kelly, you have Kevin Rinke, and you have Garrett Saldano. Mm-hmm. Um, Tudor Dixon has kind of emerged as the um, establishment favorite. And in fact, just today, Donald Trump is making rumblings that he might endorse. The Democrats are running a bunch of ads to, to try and derail Dixon. And we can talk about how, you know, the Democrats starting to mess around in Republican primaries to get more extremist candidates is taking a massive risk in the game that we're playing. Right. Like the And and to be honest, it's bad karma. Right. Like there's a juju in all of that that is really not a good thing, I, I think. Um, I, I love it, that you're it, talking about bad karma. You're speaking my language because I'm out here in California. And right, I'm like, I know. Yeah, it's like, it's like playing games with the devil. Like, you don't want to do that. Right. Well, I mean, if even a simple Wisconsin, rural Wisconsin guy like me can figure out that something's bad karma, there's probably be bad karma going on in the whole thing. But um, it, it really, it, beyond the karma aspect of it, it really just is not smart. Because, you know, if you, we don't need more ex- the most super mega version, we don't even want to take the risk. I mean, I remember in 2016 when there were a lot of Democrats who were like, gee, if Hillary gets Donald Trump, we're going to mop the floor. How did that work out for America? Not very good, right? Exactly. So, so we so, need to learn from our bad decisions in the past and keep our yeah. eyes on the prize. That's how we win the game we're in, right? So at the end of the day, I think what's going to happen is, um, so you're either going to get rinky, or Tudor Dixon. Okay. Um, both of them, you know, it's there, there isn't that none of them are accepting that the election in 2020 was legitimate in Michigan, and none of them are committing to honor the results in 2024. So it really doesn't matter. But you're, and it tells you how, kind of to a degree how far the Republican Party has fallen that, that. At this point, they're placing their hopes on people that would be Trump MAGA or even a degree more than Trump MAGA in terms of fidelity to the big lie. Right. Um, and they're trying to make them mainstream. Yeah, right? well, like, it like, seems like a long so, play, right? right? Because ultimately, it's about overturning whatever results that they don't like. It's not about governing or legislation. It's about power. Yeah, it is about power. And and that transfers not only to elections, but it's it's, you know, going after corporations the way Ron DeSantos has that they're supposedly woke and have a political agenda. It's choice uh, in women's reproductive rights. Right. It's uh, marriage equality. I mean, it just goes right. The list goes right down the line in terms of at the end of the day. I say this all the time. One of the first things that people have to understand about the game we're in is for that side, for for extremist sides, whether on the right or the left, whether here in the United States or elsewhere, it's never about policy. It's all about power. And, and, and uh, you know, for, for those who don't think that's the case, spend a little time contemplating what Putin is really trying to do in Ukraine. It's not about a policy that there's denazification. It's about power. That's what autocrats do, whether they're soft autocrats or hard autocrats, they're all the same. So it doesn't, any of these guys getting through, they may try and wrap them. I said this on the very first show. We got Doug Mastriano. There were going to be primaries down the line in Michigan and in Wisconsin and Arizona and Nevada. They were going to try and wrap that shit sandwich that is Doug Mastriano in prettier packages. And they may succeed in wrapping it in a package called Tudor Dixon Vampire Porn Queen because she was a vampire porn star. <laughs> I was like, they may no wrap it in that package. What? And for some people, apparently Donald Trump, you know, that might be a prettier package, but it's still a shit sandwich underneath, no matter how much they market it. It ain't my Jimmy John's number one. But, so. but luckily, luckily, we do have a sane incumbent in Whitmer um, and we have a we have her ad so can we just pull that up really quickly tough times call for tough people and we are going to get through this together we do not falter and we never give up we will continue to face down the challenges that come our way and we will continue to move our state forward it is clear how much is at stake in this election so it's going to take every one of us working together 
knocking doors, turning out voters, sharing your stories with your friends and your family and your coworkers, and encouraging them to vote so that we can continue to build a stronger Michigan. We're building a campaign that is focused on the people and Michiganders. We're gonna work tirelessly to deliver and we're gonna pull every one of us over the finish line. Let's work together and get it done. So looking at that ad, who wins this general? Who, if, if, if it's Whitmer against any of these other folks, who wins this one? Well, so obviously we score this one of the most important races in the country. Here's the good news. You know, Gretchen Whitmer is running a real campaign um, and she's running a smart campaign. She's running a campaign where she's talking about how many bipartisan pieces of legislation she signed, right? She's standing firm on things that are about core values like choice. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. There's a podcast that's coming out. Uh, I think today in conjunction with our show, since it's Monday with Jeff Timmer and I talking about, and Reed talking about all the races across the country in super deep detail. Nice. Um, it was mostly all these people, all, all of our Twitter fans. And I want to thank you for following us on Twitter. You, you were all reaching out asking when Timmer and I were going to do that again. You were also asking when we were going to have the show. We're, we're trying to honor what you wanted. But I made the point, and Gretchen Whitmer is the best example of this. Back in the early 90s, Republicans started winning governor's races in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Tommy Thompson, John Engler, Tom Ridge. Those right. states had had Democrat state legislatures. They had been Democrat states, primarily labor union states. Those guys got elected governor. And they had sets of conservative principles around which they would not moderate, but they drove consensus and figured out ways to start moving union voters to the Republican Party. And what Gretchen Whitmer, Gretchen Whitmer, for those of you who are Democrats, she is showing the way that you build a majority. You build that majority. She's cutting taxes in conjunction with the Republicans, not radical Donald Trump style tax cuts that only benefit the rich She's trying to cut property taxes because they have a surplus, right? So that she can go into some of those urban districts that have been held by traditional Republicans and take those voters away. She is showing you the way that you build a national coalition that is pragmatic, uh -huh. that stands for your core values uh -huh. and that, that, that becomes sustainable for the long term. You know, the Absolutely. Republican Party's problem in places like Michigan is they won. They achieved most of their objectives. Now they've descended into crazy because, right, Gretchen Whitmer is showing the way. And, and Shapiro, certainly Tony Evers in Wisconsin, they should be looking at what she's doing and going all in because that is, that is literally she is demonstrating, as is Paulus in Colorado, they are showing how you can do it. It's not these national Democrats who, you know, now we're reading about all of them who want to replace Joe Biden. It's the Gretchen Whitmers who are showing the way. And I'm muting all those people, smart, by the way. <laughs> if the Democrats were smart, they would be trying to learn from what she's doing. Yes, absolutely. Let's hope people so are. So do, do I think she'll win? I, uh, I think of the three, I'm, I'm least nervous about Michigan, but we've got to go all in on Michigan. And they're existential threats for a reason. You can't lose those battles. Right. So, yes, that battle is going well. And luckily, but better um, than the other two. I was gonna say, well, we because we have strong women in uh, Michigan. I want to point that out that these are strong women candidates who are building consensus. Because if we switch to the Secretary of State General yeah. uh, for the Mich uh, in Michigan, we have another incumbent Democrat, Jocelyn Benson, who is running against Christina Super Q, election denying Super Duper Trump, and Michael fucking Flynn endorsed Caramo who calls abortion child sacrifice, claims that demonic possession is real. I don't know. I'm watching the Republican Party, maybe. Uh, but talk to us about this Secretary of State race. Um, and then can you first remind us why the Secretary of State races in states like Michigan and Arizona are so mission critical? Yeah, so they're, they're critical because of the role that they play in the election process, right? Like for a democracy to work, you, you know, our founding fathers were geniuses because what they took is the zero sum of who holds power and they mm -hmm. wrapped it in this thing called democracy. And at the foundation of that is you adjudicate who has power through regular free and fair elections, right? Yeah. Secretary of state matters 
because because Joss, a because in the state of Michigan, Secretary of State is the one who certifies the election. If you don't certify the election, then it becomes unclear what set of electors are going to be sent out. So if you don't have a an election in which you can count on the Secretary of State certifying the actual results, but instead going rogue and saying I'm going to certify. You know, the loser Which is the winner is, or whatever. And we're seeing the road. They've done this already. Like, this is what I want people to pay Correct. attention to. Like, they've already told us uh, the that they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Yeah. If they can. So, yeah. And so Michigan is one of the states. Nevada is another one with Jim Marchant um, that, uh, quite honestly, like you, you have these super crazies who are running. Now, the good thing about Benson is um, because of what happened in 2022, um, she has a pretty high, I mean, in 2020, she has a pretty high national prominence because she had to stand pretty strong up to Trump. Um, and um, but where those governor's races matter a lot is it's very rare that you have a down ballot race, particularly a secretary of state's race, where there's more votes for those candidates than there is for the gubernatorial candidates. So to some degree, Benson's, Benson's fate is in, inevitably tied, as is Dana Nussel, the AG's candidate. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk is about inevitably that, tied to how Gretchen Whitmer does. And right. the better Gretchen Whitmer does, um, the more likely that those candidates are going to win, Benson and, and Nussel. Nussel, right. who's the AG candidate, right. um, that race is important too, because when you look at the election process in the state of Michigan, right, it's the, it's the governor is the most important, secretary of state is next. Um, slightly less important in that process is the AG because the AG is a check on it. Dana Nussel um, has, Which, you know, is well, say, pretty Nussel strong is, candidate too. Yeah, she's a strong candidate. And she's like, she is putting bad guys in prison and yet she's running neck and neck against Matt DiBerno, who is a Republican who's under investigation for criminal election fraud. Like you yeah. can't make this stuff up. Um, no. It's absolutely bonkers, uh, but you you think we're safe here? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say we're safe. You know, Nussel made a little bit of a own goal on um, uh, on a case that she was trying. I think it was related to water in Flint, right? Okay. Remember, you had um, you had a Flint water issue, um, but really she's like holding a lead right now. And Deperno Deperno is is pretty crazy and. And I also think, um, you know, Michigan is a state where, where you know, it, it actually, depending on how you ask the question, might be a state that's relatively in the middle on the, on, on the abortion issue. Um, they certainly don't want to see all abortions banned. Um, and um, there might be, you know, most people might fall somewhere in the middle on it. Um, you know, DePerno he's pretty much no abortions under any circumstances. The AG is going to play a role in what happens because the law in Michigan dates back to like, I forget what it is, 1917 or 26 or something like that. So um, yeah, I think Dana Nussel, again, you know, Dana Nussel is a little bit dependent on how Whitmer does, um, but probably should be in pretty good shape. I will tell you the one other thing, it's a big deal in Michigan. And this is, gets back to my point about Gretchen Whitmer is showing you the way Democrats, those of you in the Biden administration who are watching it, this, and I know there's a couple of you because you've said so, um, she's showing you. They may take over that the Michigan House and the Michigan Senate, they have nominated a bunch of crazies uh, in a lot of these districts because state legislative primaries, they're even more likely than congressional, right, to get through. Um, they may win, Democrats may win back the legislatures for the first time in decades Which, in Michigan, in the Senate and the House. They're both in play. It's within five seats. Um, and we're actually going to talk about a couple of the Michigan House races um, because there are competitive races in. House. No, I'm saying I'm saying the state house. Oh, the state house. Congress, okay. State house. Well, we yep. have Mallory McMorrow who kind of like got things pretty exciting um, for local politics in general in Michigan. So I think more eyes are on there uh, on all of those. Yeah, races, I would. Right? It's good that you mentioned her. It, for those of you who haven't, I think you can go back in the archives of the podcast, the Lincoln Project podcast that Reed does. His conversation with, with her, ben, it's fantastic. Right. Um, well, really she's leading a lot of fundraising um, for Democrats. I think she 
raised over a million dollars um, to contribute to different campaigns. So Correct. she's using her platform right now to ensure that more Democrats are holding their seats and 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 perhaps even flipping seats. So- well, she's they're they're going on offense in the state of Michigan. I mean, she's they again to that point, right? With Gretchen and Whitmer governing the way she is and taking away some of the Republican issues and seizing the high ground on some of these things while remaining true on the issues that that are core, you know, Democrat ones, life, uh, you know, abortion, um, uh, climate, right? Um, But while cutting taxes and finding, you know, compromise, um, they're, they're working together. And she was really the one of the first, she was an angry mom who decided I'm going to run for the state Senate. Uh, Because these people aren't representing me. This is crazy. This isn't what, what, and, um, and now, you know, that's how you win. Exactly. Driving the conversation. She took the narrative back from the crazies and flipped it on them. And I love seeing that, especially because it's coming from strong women. Um, We have to get Mm -hmm. to Arizona in a second, but do we have a quick minute to go over house three and house seven in Michigan? Yeah. So seven, I'll start with seven, which is Slotkin district, you know, Slotkin's going to have a hard race. Um, you know, as, as Lincoln Project is engaging in, in these existential threat states um, where we're able to do things that are, that are positive in terms of turning people out, tipping people, um, you know, Slotkin's district is the kind that we're, we want to try and engage. It's the kind of house race where if you're in L- Illinois, where there really aren't a lot of competitive races and you want to do things to help or uh, Indiana, you know, join the union at, um, and I think we'll put up how you can yes, do that. We're, we're going to be but shouting the out union the union and, and a lot. Because, spend spend yeah. part of your time helping out there, right? Like if you were back home in Chicago, Maya, or even where you are in LA, there aren't a lot of, uh, aren't a lot of close races, but it's Slotkin's race, Whitmer's race. Those would be great places to engage and with the internet. It's awesome because there's yep. lots of ways that you can do that. Um, the other race, though, is Peter Meyer is running against a guy, John Gibbs, who is 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 a January 6th at the Capitol guy. Yeah. Um, like once Gibbs again, is like- being backed by 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 Trump um, has grassroots energy in the race. Um, Meyer is being backed by, by DeVos. Meyer's voted for impeachment. What is outrageous and it gets back to the bad karma, bad juju, not smart is the DCCC is running ads against Meyer. They're trying to get Gibbs through. I mean, it's a very, very like sketchy play because like if we, we're seeing all these strong, strong candidates it's on the dangerous. Democrat side. So like maybe it'll work out in this case. I don't know. They're getting pummeled for doing it. But I will say if any of you who are watching this are, are donors to the DCCC, um, you know, I, I would convey to them that you're not happy, uh, about it because it's incredibly risky. And, and to be honest, um, do Democrats have a better chance of beating Gibbs than Meyer in a general? Yeah, that's true. Probably do. But if John Gibbs gets through, gets through, you all thought you had a better chance of beating Donald Trump than Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz. How did that work out for you? So, you know, Learn. I get work for Claire McCaskill. Harry Reid was occasionally able to pull it off. So was Al D'Amato and occasionally Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell's trying to play the same game, been incredibly critical of, of them for, for trying to do that, right? The DCCC needs to knock it off. They need to focus on winning freaking house races and defeating the liberals. They've got them all over the country. You're spending money trying to take up Peter Meyer, who voted for impeachment, Really? And also, like, understand that, like, people are watching, citizens are watching. And so we're saying, like, wait a second, why are you getting, you've got money to do that, but not money to, like, what are you doing? Like, we need to correct focus. I guarantee you the people, you know, like, the people who are running the D triple C, no disrespect, but you're not Harry Reid good. So knock it off. (laughs) You're not. Harry Reid, I say that as a former Republican. He was, that was an adversary. Knock it off. Knock it. I, I, I like that you're calling them out, Trivia. I think it's very necessary <laughs> well, right now. Seriously. So I'm glad that you're doing it. Um, let's turn to Arizona. 
Um, yeah. Because there we have a battle between Trump and Pence. It's playing out in real time. I'm yeah. here for it. So um, it's playing out there and in a grand jury right here in the in the Washington D.C. Maya Pence, <laughs> Pence and Trump. They're, it's wild. Like who would have who would have thought that this is where we'd be? But we are. Um, and we've got the Democrat incumbent Katie Hobbs is facing a matchup between Trump endorsed Carrie Lake and Pence endorsed Karen Taylor Robson. Neither of these Republicans are what I'd call great or not insane. We have to absolutely take a look at this Carrie Lake ad. Let's roll that. Meet Carrie Lake, Arizona's leading Republican candidate for governor and a threat to our democracy. She spreads lies about the 2020 election at every turn. You could say Biden won the presidency, kind of like OJ is innocent. Calls for election officials to be prosecuted. As your governor, we will prosecute everybody involved in our election fraud. And said if she were governor in 2020, she would not have certified the election. I would not have certified it. Carrie Lake, enemy of democracy. She's got that strong, believable jawline that a former journalist tends that they tend to have. And so that to me is why she's so dangerous, because it's like she says right. this stuff. Well, that ad was really ripping her up, right? To, in some ways, you look at that ad. Listen, here's the thing. So you got the Pence Trump thing playing out here. And and we we're kind of joking about it. But but in truth, right, like I'm pretty loyal to you in the show, Maya. But I'll tell you what, you try and hang me, I might go to a grand jury. And <laughs> you send a mob here to my house to try and string me up. I'm not going to like that very much. Exactly. I might it's speak out a little faster than I mean, it may take me less than two years to speak out. But, uh, well, but that's Pence is speaking like, out is, now. Is Pence hoping that maybe if Trump ends up getting the nomination that he gets to be VP again? Like, is he just like trying to like, no, the I think, I think, I think, <laughs> I think it's getting to the point where Donald Trump probably might try and want to hang Mike Pence again. Pence is going after him really hard, right? Like they are there. And in Arizona, they had, they had dueling rounds. Pence is getting behind Robson. Um, and I think we're going to show one of her ads in a second. And Trump is is back in Carrie Lake. He's all in on Carrie Lake because okay. um, Carrie Lake is ad. more of the crazy. But, um, you know, I think in, in the back of Mike Pence's mind, certainly in his strategist's mind, they probably think, well, if Trump's indicted and goes to jail, you know, Pence could be the guy. You know, he's slightly different constituency than DeSantis, whatever. Um, I really don't see that happening. But, um, you know, Mo Udall and John McCain used to always say, the only thing that cures presidential ambition is embalming fluid. And I think that's probably true with Mike Pence. So, yeah, I was, I, I, even though it feels like he's already been embalmed in many ways, when I see him speak, <laughs> I feel like I'm watching like one of those wax statues from Ripley's, uh, <laughs> believe it or not. Right. Um, but Let's uh, let's actually look at that Karen Robson ad uh, really quickly. Here we are in the Yuma sector of the Arizona border with Mexico. It is evidence of a failed border policy. It is evidence that the Biden and Harris administration are failing us as Americans. And Arizona is on the front line of this border crisis. Behind me are illegal immigrants that were just dropped off on the Mexico side of the border. And here they are crossing into America. The invasion is well underway. I will surge National Guard troops to the border and we will finish the wall. What in the X-Files is that ad? Like, what is happening? Um, so that ad notwithstanding, you know, Robson, um, um, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Robson is wanting to talk about any issue that's kind of a mega Trump issue, except for the election stuff. Because... She doesn't deny that Joe Biden won the state. She just wants to talk about anything else. So immigration is one of the ways that she's trying to contrast herself with Carrie Lake, who incidentally just Carrie Lake was an Obama backer in, in, in 12 and eight. Right. So, you know, I don't know. But but, she's <laughs> uh, yeah, she's out there. Both of them are kind of out there. It also yeah. says something that Doug Ducey, right, serious business guy, built a credible business. You know, he's in, he's gone all in on on Robson. Um, Lake has shown, you know, Matt Salmon 
who was a moderate, was originally going to be the normal Republican. He got out of the race to try and help Robson. Um, Ducey is backing Robson. Pence is backing Robson. The Here's the thing. Like, if, if Carrie Lake wins that primary, it will be interesting to see what Doug Ducey does. Does he endorse her? He's chairman of the RGA, right? Mm-hmm. Which is... His, it's his job to get Republicans elected governor. They, they came out pretty strongly. Well, they were really tepid about Mastriano. They're now kind of subtly changing their tune. It's going to be a real hard cross for Ducey if Lake wins, because how far will Doug Ducey go in prostituting himself? Where, where's the 30 pieces of silver with Doug Ducey? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't um, feel like there's a line. If Robson wins, you know, we rate that race as scalable um, because Robson and the big lie are less of an issue, right? Like Ducey did the right thing. She, w- she in all, you know, all evidence points that in 2024, she will be like, would be like Ducey and do the right thing. Carrie Lake, you know, if Carrie Lake's the nominee, the Arizona governor's race becomes one of the biggest in the country between her and Katie Hobbs. Okay. Um Katie Hobbs, you know, she was Secretary of State. Um, she's on defense from the Republicans, claiming that you know she stole the election somehow. Um, Which is Katie Hobbs, you know, again, and maybe it's just that Whitmer's Whitmer's talent is underappreciated. Uh, mm-hmm. Although you know, those of us who do politics appreciate how strong. Of campaign and how Whitmer is approaching it. I just get the sense Katie Hobbs is more in the vein of Tony Evers and Josh Shapiro. Like, okay, I'm going to have a crazy opponent if I just, you know, mail it in and, you know, I'll now is not the time. I'll, we know I'll, how I'll, if the I dot is. the I's and cross the T's, I'll win without having the big arc strategic, which is you got to get yourself planted there in the middle mm-hmm. and not run a base race. Yeah, you're going to want to talk about issues like Republicans wanting to take away choice and birth control and end same-sex marriages. You, you got to have a message for Hispanic voters. You know, Hispanic voters are for Republicans right now, what labor union voters used to be. Mm-hmm. Republicans are making inroads in states like Arizona with Hispanics. And, and it's a game of small numbers. If they can get 9% of Hispanics that we're going to vote for Democrats to vote for Republicans, even Republicans like Kerry Lake, there were a lot of them that voted for Donald Trump, right? That's it's actually like 18 percent because every one of those votes is going from Democrat to Republican. It's like two votes. Right. It's the vote the Democrats don't get plus the vote the Republicans get. And so like Hobbs has got to run a campaign. That is a serious and real campaign that that gets her there. And we're going to talk about the Senate race in a minute. But what it seems like to me um, and from talking to a lot of people in Arizona, Katie Hobbs is kind of, you know, being pulled along by Mark Kelly, who's an mm-hmm. American hero, the U.S. Senator there. Um, and Katie Hobbs is going to have to get more aggressive, uh, I just think. Um, well, I, I like want to hear more of the use of the word together, right? Because that was with Correct. Dr. Whitmer. It's like together, together. And I think the more Correct. they repeat that messaging and you know show those bipartisan um, issues, then we're all going to actually come out of this ahead yes like Correct. crazy can win now we know this so we just have to keep reminding everybody that crazy can win so we have to be absolutely vigilant glad you brought up mark kelly who was an astronaut uh, the incumbent a democrat he's facing a general election against one of five who are in a caravan of crazy um he's on the republican side we have competing endorsements from everyone in the maga basement trump oh, Andrew, yeah. Holly, like all of these people um can you set the stakes a little bit for this general election i don't even know if i give him credit for living in a basement it's whatever rocks they actually live under that they're coming out from i don't i don't know why you're so gracious Maya. <laughs> well you are a Bears fan. Anybody I, that well, can stick with that? Anybody that can stick with them for that many decades, clearly. <laughs> clearly it was the Super Bowl <laughs> shuffle. They did such a great <laughs> dance that I had to stick with it forever. I'm sorry. Training camp is open. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is back. Doesn't get much better than that. Hopefully, well, he has no comment on Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, right. He's a dimple guy too, by the way. Yeah. They get me every time. Anyway, we digress. Mark Kelly. Uh, so the thing that's going on, what's what's big about this is we're going to finally see who Mark Kelly gets as an opponent. 
Uh, as you pointed out, all the mega, all the mega types, they're they're all endorsing somebody different. You got Jim Lamont, he's a business man. Right now it's it's mostly Blake Masters and Lamont. Uh, Brnovich is the former AG and McGuire, who's endorsed by like Sarah Palin and that ilk, Marjorie Taylor Green. He's sort of um he's he's the Mike Flynn package in a in a different set of camo. Um <laughs> I don't want to diminish the service. I was going to say something far worse, but um, uh, well, they they, they diminish the service by, and we'll get to yeah, well, right. soon to talk um, about that. I, but. I, you know, I didn't want to open myself up to that, but um, so Lamont Masters, Masters, his master is Peter Thiel. Um, he's relying on Peter Thiel Super PAC for almost all his money. He used to work for Peter Thiel. He he has channeled Trump's rhetoric, but taken it to a whole different level. Now there there's a lot of things with Masters that that are a little bit off in the sense he's a lot like JD Vance. You know, Masters worked for Peter Thiel. He talked in an article not long ago, well a while ago, about how he cried at Peter Thiel's wedding. Peter Thiel is gay and is in a is in a partnership that he got married and masters talks about being at the wedding and crying and now he is all in on getting rid of marriage equality it's like what the fuck right like we're seeing a lot how, of this um how do you get away with that yeah right like, like apparently he knows, money but, trumps everything else um, well power yeah. power it's power yeah um remember i said you know it's not about policy it's not about you know fame fortune it's 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 all about power um, I think Masters probably gets through. Now, that being said, uh, yesterday when Timmer and I were talking on the podcast, it's going to air today uh, with Reed, um, one of the points that got made, and I think it's, it's smart, is um, we could have a situation in Arizona that's not dissimilar to what you have in Georgia, uh, where, you know, you've got Kemp, who <laughs> Donald Trump hates, and Herschel Walker, who Donald Trump is all in about it. yes because he's a puppet or herschel i honestly it's it's terrible what they're doing to that guy are you right because like you know if you're a football fan which i am um and a green bay packer fan who hates the minnesota vikings no one did more to destroy the minnesota vikings for about five years than the trade for herschel walker so there's that um but um but herschel uh, walker could it, destroy democracy if you were to well, get anywhere near office. yeah so. <laughs> i think herschel walker yeah. You know, the last time somebody made a bet on Herschel Walker, the other team ended up winning four Super Bowls with the draft picks they got for Herschel Walker. So, um, and I just want to give a shout out to my lifelong friend, my oldest friend, Michael Kramer, who's a huge Vikings fan. You'll get that joke. And I know he watches our show. So, um, but I digress. Uh, so what we could have happen here is if Robson wins the governor's primary, Mm -hmm. Right. That is not Donald Trump's candidate. That is not the mega candidate. That is the establishment's candidate. Blake Masters is the candidate of Trump. And even though, you know, the other underlings of the of the illiberal vertical under Trump, like Holly Hannity, you know, run Josh, run Holly, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tucker and the rest have all been backing various candidates, they're all going to get behind uh, masters. And so you could have this split, right? Where like the establishment has their gubernatorial candidate. You got the ultra super mega Blake masters. And that's a good thing for Kelly and Hobbs. And, and because you will have an implosion much like you're having in Georgia. Um, they will be fighting amongst themselves. Because Which is absolutely great because usually we're always talking about it's correct. the Democrats who are fighting amongst themselves. It's nice to see the Republicans making so many unforced errors. May they continue to do so, especially in an important race like this one. Um, and we we, we want to move on a little bit. Let's talk about the Secretary of State race, um, which is also critical in Arizona. Um, it's uh, like... They've made election denial like their official pastime in Arizona. I feel like they've been at like between the cyber ninjas and like all of that. And yeah. so like if they have a chance to overturn a Democrat victory, they will. 
Um, and right now, like one of the one of the candidates is a stop the steal backer, an Oath Keepers affiliated, whatever that means, uh, Mark Mark Fincham, and he's he's leading the race fight. But Triggy, what do we need to know about this race? <laughs> it's hard to say. Well, what do we need to know? Right. If you're Oath Keeper, your Oath Keeper uh, inclined, <laughs> uh, if you have a candidate like that in the race, doesn't that kind of tell you? And that guy's in the lead. That kind of tells you all you need to know. I'm trying to think what the right term would be. Your Oath Keeper favorable, your Oath Keeper. We've got to come up with something good for that mile. Like, I don't yeah. Oath Keeper inclined. There, yeah. There's got to be something that we it's, can. Well, it's like when fact, you can like work it into your, routine, your comedy it. routine and yeah. take it on the road. Uh, <laughs> Oath Keeper sensitive. I don't know what the term <laughs> would be, but um yeah, you got you got Fincham, and then he's followed by Shauna Bullock and Bo Lane, and then you got Michelle Urgent Rita. Here's the thing: seventy percent of that race is undecided when they polled it. Right. I you know I think you know, and again, you got Kerry Lake and Robson driving turnout. You got the if Masters wins, this would be my my take if it follows the pattern we've seen elsewhere. JD Vance wins. Bunch of other crazies get through in congressional primaries because J.D. Vance pulls them all. You got the governor's race. That's two candidates. It's going to be Robson or, or Lake. Divides up somewhere, you know, like half a pie or 60-40, right? But then you got the Senate race where you got five candidates. So you got from ultra super mega to mega, mega masquerading, right? <laughs> I like that, mega um, masquerading. <laughs> so... Those votes are all going to divide mm -hmm. that pie that's divided at the governor. Then you have a race like Secretary of State's race where you got six or seven of them in. Um, that will be the tell. I think Masters and Lake will have enough of the vote that they're going to pull the craziest of the crazy through. That's what I think. Well, let, I know that crazy is the theme, but uh, let's uh, let's hope that that's not. Uh, oh, we're where about we... to hit a whole new level of crazy, I think. Oh, because are we talking Missouri? Are we turning to Missouri? We're turning to Missouri, uh, where apparently their motto, the show me state, means show me an apparent American psycho running for Senate. Eric Greitens, he's the former governor who had to resign because of sexual assault allegations, campaign finance allegations, and whose wife has accused him of emotional abuse against her and her children. And I know you're like, but Maya, don't tell me. Show me, because it's the show me state. So watch this ad if you haven't seen it yet. I'm Eric Greitens, Navy SEAL. And today, we're going rhino hunting. The rhino feeds on corruption and is marked by the stripes of cowardice. Join the MAGA crew, get a rhino hunting permit. There's no bagging limit, no tagging limit, and it doesn't expire until we save our country. I'm throwing the clipboard on this one, Trig V. I'm just like, what the hell? Tell me this guy's not gonna freaking win. What's going he's, on? He's not gonna win. I don't believe he's going to win. He could win, but it's looking less likely. Um, he certainly would win an award for being the biggest asshat, although it is Missouri. So, you know, you do have Josh Hawley in the running to be the biggest asshat in, in Missouri. Um, here's the thing. With that book, I, Manhood, um, by the way. Yeah, Manhood. Like, is this what they're talking about? <laughs> I don't know that he could qualify for the nude mile at St. Louis U University of St. Louis. I don't want that. Given the way he runs, me. they would probably kick him and his manhood out. But, yeah. um, <laughs> um, not, we, also, not, we have an independent candidate, John Wood. Yeah, we do have an independent candidate. All right, let's talk about the Missouri Senate race. So, Eric Schmidt, the Attorney General, has moved to the front of the pack. Everybody's been bank ganging up on Greitens since he ran that ad, right? Because he was ahead. He is kind of falling back a little. Josh Hawley, but Trump is kind of 
behind the scenes sporting Greg. Josh Holly was sporting a candidate, Vicki Hetzler, um, who's a member of Congress, Hartzler. And uh, <laughs> she, and that's since we made this, she was was anti-endorsed by Donald Trump. Donald Trump <laughs> basically said, I would vote for anybody but her. So now she's battling the headwinds of an anti-Trump endorsement after she took a narrow lead over the field. She has now fallen back. Wait, wait. Eric I'm Schmidt sorry. has... It's a husband uh, and wife, ex-wife in this race against each no, other? No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, right. No. Okay, I, so I thought Schmidt, I saw it in the graphic. I was like, wait, what am I missing? <laughs> no, 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 no. Schmidt is now... Eric Schmidt, he's the AG, not the Google guy. Uh, he is now catapulted to the lead. He is famous for signing on to the brief that they put together election denying. And he has spent most of the Biden administration filing frivolous lawsuits that keep get, getting thrown out in court against the Biden administration. Now, there was a time, I'm old enough to remember, when Republicans were the party that was against frivolous lawsuits. But this guy is trying to use the frivolous lawsuits. They are now ganging up and attacking him. He also had early voting, where Greitens and Hartzler were doing better. Um, it doesn't matter who wins this any more than it would matter uh, who won the, you know, January 6th run for your life race between Ted Cruz, Josh Holly, and Mike Lee, right? Like, you know, uh, that, crazy is, is in, the, in the immortal words of, of Josh Holly's, clearly his hero, Forrest Gump, who can run, actually could run, crazy is as crazy does, Maya. So it doesn't matter. But here's here's interesting news. There is some interesting news out of Missouri in the Senate race in that there is an independent candidate, James Woods, who has jumped in the race. He's a former January 6th prosecutor. John Danforth has committed, he's a former senator, to spend $20 million to try and lift his campaign from a super PAC. And Danforth, who matters a lot, just basically said each of the two political parties has gone to the extremes. Um, the Democrat primary features a more moderate candidate and a pretty strongly progressive candidate. Um, you but know, this I whole, don't... This whole independent candidate, and we know now that there's a third party that's forming that just announced, like, does this not throw a wrench into things? Is this, this going to screw things up? Um, no. I, I think it's an interesting case study. Um, if it if the Democrats moderate, de nominate the moderate Democrat in the race, um, whose name, I'm sorry, is slipping my mind at the moment, but if they nominate the moderate and you have Republicans running crazy and you have a moderate Republican, January 6th, sort of Adam Kinzinger kind of Republican running with real money behind him, it probably ensures that the Democrats win. Oh, good. If the Democrats nominate the progressive, the super progressive candidate, and you have Greitens, now you've got a, a person in the center. Now the progressive the progressives will say, oh my God, this is going to get a, a Republican elected. It's just going to take votes from us. The Republicans are all going to say, oh my God, he's going to take votes from us and ensure uh, there's another member of the squad. But that's what the two extremes always do. They don't want that threat in the middle. And right. so it, it kind of creates a choice for Democrats. You either go with the more centrist option, in which case this guy's going to hurt the Republicans, or yeah. if you go with the progressive and they go with crazy, well, then it's taking votes from both sides. And, and there's going to be a lot of people who are watching this who are, who are really progressive. There will be people on the Trump side who will criticize me and say, oh, no, you know, you're being unfair to us. We're not a liberal, particularly the progressive. Well, listen, that's the politics in the game we play is one where it's about trying and, and the democracy, which we have, is about trying to find people that can work towards the center. Yeah, um, because, you know, you nominate somebody who's a Claire McCaskill kind of Democrat and you got the independent in there and great. You're going to have Claire McCaskill. Yeah. And you so. know what? I don't agree with Claire McCaskill probably when she was in the U.S. Senate and a lot of stuff. But as a Republican in the game that we played, I'm perfectly good with Claire McCaskill. I, we want to be able to move forward as a country. No more capital Correct. tax, things like that. Um, Correct. You're not going to get 100% of what you want. System's not built for that. In North and if, if you think that you that you if you think that that your side has no extremism, you're probably an extremist yourself.
true if you're on the right or the left. Facts. So, and that's, uh, so that's what's going on in, in Missouri and it's, it's a big deal. Um, and yeah, and we're definitely watching. Um, before we let you go, uh, we also want to talk about a couple other races that are worth looking at in Washington state. Um, there's house races in the third and fourth, a couple of Republican incumbents who actually voted to impeach Trump. Um, yep. But let's not let that fool us. They're not all that great. So what do we need to know about these races, Trigby? Well, Jamie Herrera Butler has got uh, a candidate running against her, Joe Kent, who's like literally talking about civil war kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, she voted for, for impeachment. So did Dan Newhouse. Um, they both have primaries. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, if, it, if both of those races, if Joe Kent ends up beating Herrera Butler and you got Joe Kent, it, it's a little bit of a Republican leaning district, but Joe Kent is so far out there that Democrats really would have a chance of picking up the seat. Um, I think Newhouse, you know, he's in a little stronger position. He's probably not as good a candidate as Herrera Butler. Um, so, you know, the, Neither of the, you know, it isn't, it's not a good thing that they have primaries. It's a big deal for Donald Trump. Um, they're both districts that, you know, the two Republican incumbents are probably as conservative as you can be and still win in those districts. So if the, if the crazy wins, the good news is the Democrats may very well pick up two seats there. Um, but again, um, you know, there is the, there is the risk. So, you know, the Democrats have to be really careful about not screwing around there. And, and, you know, they want to have the moderate Republicans get through because those kinds of voices, if, if, if those two win the primary, Democrats can't lose. They're either gonna have Republicans who are committed to democracy, at least in terms of understanding Trump's threat, or they're gonna end up winning the seats. Um, you know, so, but Wait, big races. Mean- Trump has gone all in to beat both of those guys. He hates them. Yeah, and I and, and also wanted to remind people that it's also about controlling, keeping control of the House and the Senate, like we don't want to lose any seats. Um, that's what I just want to say. <laughs> it's important yep. to note. Um, finally, uh, we're going to click our ruby slippers and head to Kansas, where Democrat Governor Laura Kelly is facing stiff competition from the Republicans. It's worth noting that while Kansas seems like a conservative bastion, they actually have a pretty deep history of progressive politics. So it's not unusual for them to elect big D Democratic governors. How's this one going to go, Trigby? Yeah, so you got you got Kelly's Kelly's getting a stiff challenge from Derek Schmidt, who's the attorney general. Um, to your, you know, we rate that race at 15. Um one of the big things that happened in that race is the police union flipped on on Kelly. They backed her four years ago. They're now going with Schmidt. Wow. Um, the bigger news out of Kansas uh, is not so much the primary, but you have an abortion referendum. It's first in the country. Um, and the, the nature of it is um, it's asking the question, do Kansas, Kansans, Kansas? Kansians, Kansian? whatever. Kansanians? Um, Kansians. I, I'm sorry for the people in Kansas, um, but uh, I'm sorry that it's, I'm butchering. I think it's Kansans. It Sam's is. helping us out. He's like, it's definitely Kansans. Kansans. <laughs> Kansans. Thank you, Sam. Um, Kansans, uh, you know, the question is, do they have a constitutional right to, to uh, abortion rights? Um, that's the question that's being posed to voters. It's a big deal because it's first in the country. It's a big deal because, to your point, um, there is a history of progressive politics, even though Kansas is a conservative state. Um, and, you know, some of that is, you know, there's big Scandinavian presence in Kansas. And, um, you know, they, let's face it, Scandinavians tend to be pretty conservative church going people who, you know, tend to be more social, socially conscious in their politics. So um, you see that in Sweden, you see that in Minnesota, you see that in Kansas. So we'll see what happens with that. But it's, it's going to be important. Okay, so just we're wrapping up now. Um, and crazy is the theme. We need people to pay attention. I just want to make sure we're hitting all those key points. We need to pay attention to these races. No more bad juju. No more, <laughs> none of that. Um, but most importantly, we want to end the show with a call to action uh, because democracy only works when we do. 
we absolutely have to vote. That means checking your voter registration, but also registering other people to vote. Find out who's running where you live and vote for democracy. Vote for the candidates who believe in democracy, like from school boards on up. And if you have anything else left to give um, as far as energy, join the union. We talked about it earlier in the show. If you go to the jointheunion.us, um, we will hook you up with volunteer opportunities in your own community, right? Grassroots, on the grounds. And if you don't have time to volunteer, you could also donate. You can donate to your local candidate or to any organization fighting autocracy and working to save our democracy, like the Lincoln Project. Um, we can do this, but it's going to take all of us. So, um, like I said, buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride through primary season, so into the general. So that's all the time we have. We'll be following these races and more until Election Day. So keep coming back. Trigvi, thank you for your expertise. Everybody, please tune into that podcast. You can follow Trigvi at Trigvi Olson and me. I'm at Maya on stage. And then the breakdown is tomorrow, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern and Wednesday. Catch Lisa Senegal and I on We're Speaking with guest Terry Canefield. Um, so don't miss that. And uh, we'll see you again very soon.